Good afternoon, everyone. Michael, you have unmuted yourself. You can turn on your video as well with a little camera in the lower left-hand corner. Yeah, it's not letting me do that. No, let me make sure. Okay, let's see here. Okay, you should get a little notification asking you to turn it on. Okay, there we there are. There we go. Okay, so you can go ahead and start getting your screen share set up. Um, if you want me to walk you through that, I can. No, we're good. Uh, you got it together. Um, so Michael is the past president of the Pacific Coast Numismatic Society and will be talking to us about, as the slide says, some medals of the California State Agricultural Society and its precursors. So I'm going to turn off my camera and audio. I'm here if you need anything, Michael. Otherwise, it is your show. Well, thank you and uh, good afternoon and welcome to my Newman Numismatic Portal Seminar. I'd like to talk about some of the earliest um, struck medals in the Western United States. And these are award medals um, and agricultural award medals of which um, that's a, a collecting discipline unto itself, in fact. So our story starts with a Mr. James LLF Warren, which seems like a lot of initials. Um, in the past, he would have been known as the father of California agriculture, which of course is a major industry in California with uh, over 400 marketable crops, in fact. But um, I think today he's largely forgotten by most. Um, he arrived in California in 1849 as one of the so-called Argonauts, looking to make his fortune in, in, in the newly discovered gold. Unlike many of, of his uh, uh, fellow Argonauts, um, he was not that young a man. Um, it well into his 40s, whereas most of them were, were much younger and willing to take, the, to, uh, take the, the risk of coming all the way to California, which was literally the Wild West at the time. He joined a, a, a mining company, so-called, called the Sweden mining, mining Company, because that was the name of the boat they came on, um, and he left from Boston, where he was from. Of course, the Sweden Mining Company, like many of these, um, uh, uh, outfits that were supposed to pool their profits promptly failed when everybody decided to go on their own. So I don't know too much of what happened to him for the next year or so, but in, in 1851, he set up a general store, which he called Warren and Company in Sacramento. And uh, eventually he was selling agricultural and horticultural um, products. We'll talk about that in a moment. In 1853, because of floods in the Sacramento River, which happened pretty much every year, um, he, moved in a, he moved to San Francisco uh, with his son, John Quincy Adams Warren. And there he was instrumental in the formation of the California State Agricultural Society. So here is, is Warren. Um, in 1855, he was given the honorific by the governor of Colonel, and he went by that as Colonel Warren and signed all his correspondence that way from there on. His papers are in the Bancroft Library at the University of California at Berkeley. And for, for that reason, there's quite a bit known about him, including this photograph. And as I mentioned, he promoted agriculture and horticulture. He was quite, a, quite, the, uh, quite, quite uh, zealous about that. And in 1854, he started a magazine called The California Farmer, which was um, noted on, uh, not so much as a trade publication, but as really an independent um, newspaper not particularly tied to any manufacturing or farming interests. And that ran all the way until 2013 and, and of course was like many newspapers a victim of, of the internet. And early issues of that paper, which was an important part of my research, are online on the California Digital Newspaper Project, which is a fantastic resource for this kind of, of uh, research. We can see a little bit of what he uh, um, was, was selling in his, um, at his store and how it changed from some of the advertisements in, in the Sacramento paper. In 1851, it was sort of a traditional kind of general store where he was buying gold dust and, and reselling it. He also had books and uh, you, you could buy uh, food, uh, pickles and pork and spices and whatnot. But by 1852, he really specializes in his passion, and you can see that he's selling uh, uh, varieties of grapevines, which incidentally um, predates that of Augustin Harassi's um, uh, cultivation of grapes in Sonoma, who is often called the, the father of the California wine industry, and he is actually well known, and there's a numismatic story behind him, but we don't want to get too off track. 
and Osage orange, which is a, a tree that I'm, I'm familiar with from wood turning. It's, it's a beautiful wood. Um, I didn't know it was used for hedges. I mentioned the Bancroft Library has a lot of his, uh, his papers. This is an engraving of, of his store in Sacramento that was on J Street near Front Street, which is, is close to where the river would be, which is why it flooded. It's also pretty flat around there. And what I want you to see is that, you know, besides the signs calling it the New England seed store, he was from New England, um, is the agricultural hall on the second floor. The reason I want you to know that is because in 1852, Warren took it upon himself to decide that California needed to have an agricultural fair. He was familiar with agricultural fairs from his time in Massachusetts and had exhibited and won prizes there. And indeed, he held it, this first fair in California, on the upper floors in that agricultural hall in his store in Sacramento. Now, in, 18, in, in the winter of, of 1852 and 1853, Sacramento River flooded a couple of times and, and he gave up, this property was sold and, and he moved to San Francisco. And there he located in what is now downtown at Montgomery and Bush Street in a new, a new building called Music Hall. And he was, it was a big building, most of the block, and he was the largest tenant. And that, that incidentally, that building was owned by Henry Meggs who there's a numismatic story behind him as well, of course, um, but we won't get derailed. And so he decided to have another fair in 1853. And again, it was on the floor above um, his retail space. So this medal, I believe to be the medal that he wore, awarded two uh, prize winners at the 1852 fair of his in uh, Sacramento. It is almost always found unawarded and, and in pretty, pretty good condition. And we'll mention, talk about that in a little bit. It says on it, designed, arranged, prizes presented by Warren and Son of Sacramento City, California. And it's signed S and H F. And then the back side is for the award. It says Sac City on the bottom. This one is in white metal, which is pretty much the most common. I recently was able to find one in bronze, again, unawarded and again, uncirculated. Here are some of the specifics. Was cataloged in an early TAMS, uh, Tokens of Metal Society uh, uh, journal article by Linda Smith as California 6. Um, it's an inch and a half in diameter. And I did a survey using the Newman Numismatic Portal, eBay, and other sources. And uh, I found that there were indeed two silver medals, one of which was in the Ford sale, one of which was in an early catalog on the, on the portal. Uh, six in white metal and four in bronze. Linda Smith didn't find any silver ones, um, but five in white metal and five in bronze. As I mentioned, most of them were unawarded. In fact, out of all those medals that I could find, only two were engraved. One was a silver piece and not the one in the forge sale, but, a, but the other one. Um, which was engraved to, a, to an actual award winner for an actual prize. And then this one in, in white metal, which was sold by Fred Holleberg's uh, company um, at auction a few years back. And it's hard to tell, but it's engraved to Messrs. Warren and Company. And I believe this to be Warren's pocket piece, actually, that um, he did win prizes at his own, at his own, um, at his own fair, we don't know how uh, how impartial the jurors were, but he did he was awarded some prizes, and um, and uh, um, this one is engraved to him, but it isn't engraved for anything particular. So uh, again, I think it might have been a pocket piece. In 1853, he had this fair in October um, in San Francisco. The newspapers tell us it was it was. Um, it opened in the evening at the hall above their, their, their business. And it was pretty successful. It ran for six or seven weeks. Um, the last mention of it I could find was, was almost a month later or over a month later. And this, month, this medal is indisputably from that fair. Um, again, it, it says uh, designed and arranged and prizes presented by Warren and Son this time. And this time, it, instead of just the basket of flowers, it has uh, two allegorical figures. Uh, one representing horticulture and one wearing, wearing, uh, uh, representing uh, agriculture. And underneath those two allegorical figures, it's engraved San Francisco, October 1853. 
And this one is awarded to a TP Rob Esquire for his best onions. And in fact, he, wore, he won another one um, for his best squash. You'll notice there's a, um, a deposit on both of these medals that I don't know what it is. Um, I don't exactly know how to get it off. Um, that's something I'm open to suggestions for. Um, I probably will end up sending it to a, a professional conservator, however. So let's talk about Rob, just because I was able to find out about him, find out, find out about him. Um, his, his, we don't know much about his onions, but his squash were pretty phenomenal. One of them weighed 131 pounds. And I actually think he was probably from Roseville, not Sacramento, because there was another paper from Roseville that, that called him very local. Here's a close-up of the two, two figures. The one on the, um, on the left is uh, horticulture with a, uh, a, a crown of flowers, and she was holding a basket of flowers, you may recall. And then the one on the, on the uh, right is holding a, uh, a, uh, some, uh, some grain and has a wreath of grain as well. Here's a specific. This one is, is two inches in diameter, so it's larger. And uh, those two examples were silver. Uh, it, interestingly, there are two manufacturing firms signed it. On the, on the um, obverse, um, one says F.B. Smith and Hartman, uh, F.T. for Fesset. So that's how we know that the other metal was S and H is Smith and Hartman. But on the other side, it's, it's, it's signed Ball Black and Company. Both of these companies uh, made um, metals. Uh, Smith and Hartman made um, uh, Civil War tokens as well. And Ball Black and Company made um, a lot of other things um, besides um, uh, numismatic articles. They did make some important um, uh, uh, military metals. I found it sort of interesting that he went to New York for these, for these um, uh, manufacturers. Uh, the... Um, he could have gone to Boston. There were there were there were die sinkers there. In San Francisco, they were making private gold there. Uh, Albert Cooner engraved dies for for uh, a number of important uh, uh, territorial gold pieces or private gold pieces. Um, but it was not really until 1855, um, for a, a, a celebration of the Crimean War um, um, festivity, that I just wrote an article for the Pacific Coast Numismatic Society about that Achilles Vachon and Marc Giron struck, um, actually struck a medal in San Francisco. Interesting, they're the ones who also made the um, Vigilante Medal of 1856. Now my survey of this, I could not find any bronze ones, although Linda Smith found one and he found one silver and I found uh, four silver, but this has actually been increased to five because I learned on the ANA Facebook um, page um, when I advertised this talk that uh, someone else had another one that is a different one. So that at least five silver. I mentioned that Warren uh, started a newspaper. So in 1854 in January, his passions turned to, to journalism and he started the California Farmer, the Journal of Useful Sciences, it, it, it claims to be. And in that newspaper, he passionately editorialized for a state agricultural society and for it to run a fair. And indeed, in 1854, later in the year, um, in the summer, the state legislature uh, created such a society. And Warren did not have an official portfolio, but he clearly was uh, the instigator. This plaque at Bush Street and Montgomery, where Warren's store was located, now, now is a high rise, um, talks about the, uh, the first state fair, which, which was not the first fair, um, because Warren had already had to. But on October 4th, 1854, sponsored by the California State Agricultural Society, the exhibition of horses, cattle, mules, and other stock in agricultural, mechanical, and domestic manufacture and productions promoted the new state's growing agricultural industry. A different city held the fair each year until Sacramento became the permanent location in 1861. And indeed, it was in different cities. The first one was 1854 in San Francisco. 1855 was in Sacramento. That's going to be important, so remember that. In 1856, it moved to San Jose, 1857 to Stockton, but none of those fairs had, had award medals. But in 1858, they did award medals. And um, uh, we'll talk about that uh, uh, soon. In 1859, the fair permanently moved to Sacramento and it continues as the Cal Expo. Um, here's a photograph. It's especially the California Exhibition and State Fair and lots of fun things to do there, as well as to see agricultural um, uh, exhibits of, of all sorts. Uh-oh, I got to back up. 
there's something we need to talk about before we get to the actual uh, Cal State metals. And this is a mysterious metal. It looks exactly like the San Francisco metal with two exceptions. On the front, it says September 18, Sacramento City, California, right underneath the allegorical figures. And on the back, it says Sacramento City. Here it is in a white metal. And here it is in, in bronze. Now these metals are always known, always found unawarded. Um, uh, this is, this is um, um, reasonably well known. They, they seem to be more of them than the other two. I've examined these very closely and the dye work is exactly the same as the 1853 San Francisco metal. And it's clear to me that the September 18 and the Sacramento City were added to the dyes after the San Francisco metal was struck. This contradicts what auction catalogs, including the Ford sale and others um, uh, claim that, um, that, that it was taken off. I, I can't see any, any scenario where, where, um, where this metal preceded the one in 1853. Warren, of course, only did two fairs, one in Sacramento, one in, in, in San Francisco. But in, in 1855, remember 1855 was the year that um, the official state fair was in Sacramento. He passionately advocated for the establishment of named award medals, like in the Massachusetts fair, where he, he, he called out a couple of different um, named medals. And by that, I mean uh, where some somebody endowed a, a medal series and, and out of the endowment the the medals were were, were, were purchased and then that na that that person's name was associated with the medal so I think that this that this medal well oh I should also add that letters to the editor of the California farmer and he of course was the editor strongly opposed war and profiting from the fair and so the fair was held in Sacramento and no medals were awarded and I think that this that this would have been the Warren Medal. You know, he had this design. He had some. They just re-engraved the the dies a bit, but they didn't. But they never were used. So back to the State Agricultural Society. Now the transactions of the California State Agricultural Society, at least until around uh, the early 1900s, are online and uh, can be searched. And from the 1858 transactions, this is we know that this was the first time they gave medals. The the medals are explained. I'll read this because I think the language is kind of is kind of the 19th century language is kind of funny. Um, in explanation of what otherwise may seem an absurdity, it should be understood there are to be three sizes of medals, both of the gold and of the silver. The gold medals be rated at fifty dollars, thirty dollars, and twenty dollars. The silver medals at fifteen dollars, ten dollars, and five dollars. In actuality, the three si metals were different sizes, of course, and they were one and a quarter, one and a half, and one and three quarter inches in diameter. And I wrote here, all gold metals were 1.5 inches. I think there may have been a, just a few that were small ones. I could not find any large ones in the transaction. I did find that in 1858, they awarded over a hundred gold medals and many, many silver medals. In 1859, when the, when the fair moved, um, back to Sac Sacramento, the 1858 fair was in Roseville. Um, only two gold medals are listed in the transactions. And in fact, they had uh, serious financial problems um, from 1863 to 1867 and didn't award any medals at all. In 1868, somehow they, they, um, they, their financial problems were, were dealt with and they decided to um, formalize how many medals they would give. Um, and they wrote a gold medal to the most meritorious ex exhibition in each of the seven departments. And the departments were things like uh, uh, Department of Mechanical Things and, and Department of Livestock and uh, Grain and, 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 their, and their, uh, thereabouts. So there were much fewer um, medals awarded in gold and so it didn't cost so much. And here was the gold medal looks like, again, this is one and a half inches. This is a, a later medal in 1895, and that year they awarded more than seven. This one was, was a special medal, in fact, and is discussed in the transactions, awarded to uh, Shaw Ingram Batcher and Company, which was a uh, sort of a general store in Sacramento. Um, they misspelled Ingram. Um, 
and this was sort of a best of show kind of metal, you know, across, across all categories. And you notice there are a lot of uh, uh, symbols on the on the um, on 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 the uh, on the obverse. On the back, it says awarded by the California State Agricultural Society, and then then where it's engraved with uh, some grapevines on the uh, on the left, and uh, some other kinds of of vines on the um, on the uh, on the right. Here it is in silver. Um, this one is one and three quarter inches. If you look closely between the two, you'll notice that the engravings are different, and so um, different dies were cut for uh, for each of these um, each of these pieces. They didn't use a reducing machine. You know, if you look at the bear, for instance, they're quite quite a bit different, as well as the trees and the mountains and whatnot. This one was awarded in 1869, um, and here it is in uh, one and a quarter, an unawarded one. So this would have been the small metal. The, uh, the previous one would have been the large. And again, you know, the dye work is, is quite a bit different. So I want to talk about some of the symbols. And what I want to do is, is draw some similarities between the state seal and the, and the, um, and the, uh, the symbols on, on the metal. Um, we have a bear, of course, which the, 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 um, the bear flag was one of the, uh, was the original flag of California. Um, it has miners' equipments and grapes and mountains, and an, and an, and a female figure, but some things are different. It it has more agricultural stuff on it, which it is an agricultural metal. It has horses and cows and redwood trees, and 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 the ships are absent. But I want to talk a little bit about the allegorical symbol um, on the state seal. Um, it it was it adopted in 1849. And this is a, an early description of it. I want to read the part in red, which talks about the, 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 the foreground figure represents the goddess Minerva having sprung full grown from the brain of Jupiter. She's introduced as a type of political birth of the state of California without having gone through the probation of a territory. In other words, Minerva was, 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 grown, was born fully grown up. California didn't, was never a territory. And so it became just a state. So this is the kind of thing that 19th century folks would have um, related to, or at least those who were trained in the classical studies. And so what about this bust of Minerva? Um, on, the on the metal, it's replaced um, by a pedestal, the shield and, and the medusa on the, on, the, on, on the shield who's associated with Minerva classically are replaced by a pedestal and, um, and, a, and a sheaf of wheat. And the helmet is replaced by a wreath of grain. And that, that's important because that tells us that this is Ceres, the Roman goddess of agriculture. And again, thanks to Mary Lannan of the, Sacram of the San Francisco Ancient Coin Club who, uh, who pointed that out to me. And so I like to think of that, of this metal as the state seal, but deconstructed in that they took the pieces apart and, and, um, and, and rearranged them and maybe reinterpreted as well. Many other types of awards were given in these, early, especially in these early fairs. Um, this is an 1861 picture in a museum that features the metal on on one side and and uh, um, some some fancy silver work on the back. Here's some others that were in uh, in various auctions. Um, this one here, the chalice kind of cup, has that has the official metal. The other three have the same reverse. And, the, and I've, look, I've examined two of these, the, these, these two on the left, and um, they really do have the metal set in them. And, um, and the reverse part, the, the, which was the, had the engraving, is the same, but the, uh, the obverse part, which is the state seal, is, uh, is, is quite a bit different, of course. I've never actually seen a metal um, alone that, uh, that looked like this. Uh, here's somebody who won both the Mechanics Institute and the State Fair and used it in his advertising on his photography. This is an early uh, cabinet photo. I collect cabinet photos for the backs more so than for the fronts, which is maybe a little odd. <clears throat> Though who made this metal? Well, the 1858 transactions are very detailed about how they spent their money. And it's, there's, a, there's a line that says they paid $20 to the Nall brothers for the design of a metal. The Nall brothers were artists in San Francisco and uh, they, they had a studio on Broadway Street. And here's an ad um, in the city directory of 1858. 
in San Francisco. The Knoll brothers were part of a, a family of artists who, um, who emigrated from Germany. Uh, Carl, or, or Charles, is, is recognized as an important painter of early California scenes. Here's one uh, down on, on, the, on the, the bottom of the Caros roping a steer. You know, these are five and figure paintings at least, so very expensive. Hugo, his brother, was known for his engraving and his photography, and indeed he engraved the, the membership certificate of, of, of many early uh, pioneer organizations in, in California, including the Vigilante Committee in 1856. This one right here is, in fact, the Vigilante um, uh, membership uh, certificate of Charles Nall himself. So Charles was, was a, a member of the Vigilante, and probably Hugo was as well. Hugo is, is credited with the design of, the, of, the, of a medal the year before, which is probably the earliest medal, um, uh, actually, or the earliest of these, of these, of, of these guys, um, uh, the San Francisco Mechanics Institute. Um, and we know that Hugo designed it, but the dies were executed, the medals manufactured by, by Albert Kuhner, who I mentioned was the, the, um, the die sinker who made many of the um, dies for the uh, early territorial, uh, early early private gold pieces in, in San Francisco. And I think that it's likely that he also um, had something to do with the, the California uh, State Agricultural Society medals, you know, that Hugo likely designed it and Albert Kuhner probably made them. Now, they made, they awarded this medal mostly in the large silver and in the gold for almost 40 years, but the survival rate seems very low. Um, Linda Smith doesn't talk about the, about, about the rates. I was able to find um, mention of only three, including the one you see, the, you saw of the small metal, and only a single 1.5 uh, inch and a half metal um, in an auction uh, several years ago. About a dozen, and this number is maybe a little higher, maybe 15 of the one and three quarter of the silver medal, and five and maybe six now of the, uh, of the gold medal, all of which are, are the inch and a half. So I don't know if, I have not been able to find a picture of the silver inch and a half medal, so I don't know if the dies were the same. I should imagine that they would be. There's a silver one and a half and the gold one and a half. <clears throat> In 1900, the society, um, for one reason or another, decided to replace the uh, the old metal design, and um, and the transactions describe um, um, a payment of nine hundred and thirty eight dollars plus forty two dollars in interest for metals received um, to the Shreven Company, which is a jeweler in San Francisco that that's still uh, still around today. Um, and in those days, Shreven Company did make a lot of metals, and there are a lot of uh, they made a lot of nice metals. Um, and, and, and there, they, it, it, it is the actual state seal. Um, this one's from 1909 in, uh, in what I think is uh, gilt silver. Um, here's a, a silver one. Um, it also comes as, as a bronze. And it may come as actual gold, although I haven't actually examined one to be able to weigh it. These two metals weigh um, exactly the same, around 44 grams. <clears throat> In uh, 1911, they must have run out of metals, or Shreve and Company were too expensive. It's not entirely clear. Um, and a man named George Larson, um, oh, I should say that Shreve and Company signed it on the back. That's how you tell. Um, in 1911, um, they, re they contracted with George Larson, um, and he, he re-engraved metals of the same design. It's pretty faithful. Um, copy of the Shreve and Company design. It's signed here, uh, Larson and Company down on the um, on the lower part. Um, there are some some diagnostic differences, uh, mainly in the uh, in the crown on Minerva, and a little bit on the minor. Here it is in silver. Um, Larson engraved a, a number of medals. His, his most well-known one, he's a Swedish American, and one of his most well-known ones was for the uh, Pan Pacific International Exposition for the Sweden exhibit. And this was uh, a representation of the Sweden exhibit building. Uh, here's the Tower of Jewels in the back. By 1918, it was, it, they, they, the State Agricultural Society contracted again 
It took me a long time to it signed MF and company. And this one's quite a bit different. You'll notice the crown is quite a bit different here on, on, uh, on, on Minerva. And, the, and the, the, the minor is very different. There are a lot of other differences here. It took me a long time to find out what MF and companies um, uh, stood for. In fact, it wasn't clear to me it was an F for a long time because a lot of times these metals are dinged up. I thought it might have been an E for quite a while. But I, I found one. I didn't win it on eBay, but I found one that was in the original box. And the box was, was labeled Maurice Friedberger and Company of Stockton, California. So MF and Company was certainly them. Now they use this die for a long, or they use this company for a long time, and the dies wore out. And so I've located at least four different varieties with uh, subtle differences of the um, of of the dies. Some of them might appear to be the die being uh, sharpened up, particularly some details in the mountains, and that's detailed in some articles that I wrote that I'll talk about at the end. And even. Yet one more die sinker was used. In 1949, a man named Ray Dodge uh, recut the die, re-engraved re some dies or made some dies. Um, this one is rather cartoonish to me. I mean, you know, the, uh, the, the figure is kind of funny looking. Um, and it's a, definitely a cruder type of metal. And it's exceedingly rare. I've only been able to locate one that was in one of Fred Hollibur's auctions. Um, it's signed Dodge Inc. And then an SS, which I don't know what that stands for, is punched above. <clears throat> Who is Dodge? Well, he was Ray Dodge, a 1924 Olympian. I don't think he won anything, but I'm not sure about that. And he started a trophy company in Chicago before he moved to Los Angeles. And his most famous work is quite recognizable. It's the Oscar. They only made that metal for a very, very limited period because, you know, just hard to find um, the one of 1949 is it. In 1951, or perhaps earlier, the format was changed to a, a much larger metal with three inches of diameter with the state seal again. Um, but this is a much higher relief uh, metal. It's signed AE Company, San Francisco, um, San Fran. I don't know um, who that is. I've not been able to locate a jeweler with those initials. Um, in, in directories and phone books at the time. This comes in two varieties. On the, it took me a long time to figure that out, in fact, too. And take a look at this wreath. You know, it's sort of leaves and berries here. All the ones that are awarded to by the wine uh, department of the, of the State Fair have a wine um, uh, uh, wreath of leaves of, of wine leaves and, and, and grapes, or grape leaves and grapes, rather. The um, you know this this of of all the uh, of all the award categories in the current California State Fair the the, the wine may be the one that is most fiercely uh, competed as the wine industry is such an important part of California agriculture. This one is is not silver; it's some kind of plating on a bronze metal. So they they did award three inch silver medals. I suppose those would be pretty expensive. <clears throat> On the reverse, it has a uh, representation of the uh, the seal of the California State Agricultural Society. It's kind of sort of uh, uh, um, stylized. Um, this never was the main motif on an agricultural metal, which is a pity because it's an interesting design. It was used on ribbons. In 1956, they redesigned again. Um, perhaps to be more modern, I suppose. Um, they moved the state seal to the back. And I call this the three flags with bear motif. And um, this was the, the uh, by now, you know, the state fair was, was more than just agricultural exhibits. It was, you know, a carnival and things to do and um, fried bacon on a stick kind of thing. Um, and so uh, the bear, of course, being, being the symbol of California, state animal, um, and the three flags, I'm not sure what they represent, except maybe to have a good time. And, and these also had two different reverses, again, with the sort of leaves and a few berries um, to, uh, to uh, grape leaves. Other than that, these are unsigned, and we don't know who manufactured them. But again, also three inches, and apparently only in, in uh, the bronze um, composition. In 1968, they did it one more time. Well, almost one more time. Um, and it's a very abstract design. Um, 
sort of a box or ball in a box. It's not quite sure, you know, what that is to me. I know that this is 1968, however, because an ice cream company won for several years in a row. It must have been very good ice cream. Um, and in 1968, in 1967, they had this award design with the, uh, with the, the, the three flags and a bear. And in 1968 and 69, they, their, their medals um, were, uh, we're we're, cha we're 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 changed to this. Now there's one that was one last medal that was sort of a mystery, and I call this one three flags in a box because the bear has been replaced by that box thing. And um, I've only found two of these. This is the one that's engraved. The other one is unawarded, and it's 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 not entirely clear with the with the when the when before I had the engraved one, what the placement was. Was it before before the box? And after the three flags with bear, or, or after the, or after them, and I believe it was afterwards. And this one isn't awarded for an exhibit; it's awarded for service to the organization. So it's not entirely clear if it was actually used as an exhibit award. Um, it appears to be rare um, until more examples come out. We, we, I guess we will know. So some of the some of the. The, 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 I think there are some important outcomes from from uh, from my work here um, on 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 on, agri on the California Agricultural Medals. The first of which is a timeline, and I'll, I'll run through this. So the first medal was the Warren Medal with the basket of flowers that was used in 1852 in Sacramento. The second one is the Warren Medal with the allegorical figures in 1853 in Sacramento in San Francisco. And then the mystery Warren allegorical medal with the Sacramento signature um, uh, uh, designation, which I think is 1855. Then the Knoll brothers ran from 1858 to at least 1895. That gold medal I showed is the latest one I've been able to find. They could have run to 1899. Shreve and Company ran from uh, from 1900 um, when they were paid to. Um, at least 1915. That's the latest one that I've been able to find. Now, Larson and company, the earliest one was 1911 and the latest 1927. And there's an overlap here, which seems may seem kind of odd. But I think what it is there is that uh, certain of these uh, so-called departments uh, ran out of metals before others. And so um, they each had their own budgets, I'm sure. And so um, if they, they still had the Shreve and company around, they didn't have to buy new ones. The Morris uh, Friedman and, one, and Company, um, the earliest I've found is 1929 and the latest 1948, which is sort of consistent with the Dodge one being 1949. That could have run as late as 1951, we don't know. Um, the earliest AE and Company is 1952. Um, they appear to use only 52, 53, and 54. And then the three pennants with bears, ran from 1956 to um, 1967, and I know that that uh, that last date because of this, the ice cream winner. And then the 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 box medal, um, at least 1968 six, and 69. I don't know how much later it went to. And then the three pennants without the bear, um, um, I think, were 1972 to 1974. So my conclusions. Um, the California Agricultural Mail Fairs awarded actual medals um, from 1852 into um, the 1970s. And we can thank Colonel James L.L.F. Warren for that, for both the fairs and for the, the award medal idea. Um, I would note he was also a collector of, of coins, stamps, relics, and curios. And um, he moved to Howard Street and lived into his 90s. Um, and um, um, when he died, um, his his house was full of stuff, as many collectors' houses are, and um, and this was noted by uh, by the newspapers of the time. And um, I suspect that the reason we see the unawarded um, um, uh, Warren allegorical medals, which are always unengraved, and probably the 1852 medal, is that he that he had them. And he kept them, and they were they were just part of his estate. And when his estate was was sold off, um, these entered the collector market. 
So we now have a timeline and order of these medals, which I think is important to know. And we also know that the Nall brothers designed the first uh, um, agricultural society medal, as I, as, I, as I showed. And I think there's circumstantial evidence that the famous Albrecht Kuhner was, was the die sinker and manufacturer. I wrote two papers about this. Um, the, the first, uh, both in the Metal Collectors of America's uh, quarterly publication, The Advisory. If you're interested in, in metals, I, I suggest joining the Metal Collectors of America. I, I find it to be a very interesting organization with, a, with an ex extremely uh, uh, nice uh, magazine. Um, in 2019, I, uh, I wrote about the, um, the, fair, the, the, the medals of the official fair and then in the most recent uh, issue of the advisory, I talk about Colonel Warren and, uh, and his three, three medals. So thank you. And um, uh, I'm open up for, um, for questions. Uh, the website here is that of the Pacific Coast Numismatic Society, um, which I'm quite active in. So thank you very much. Okay, we do have a few questions in the Q&A. So let me pull them up and if anyone else has any other questions, go ahead and send them with the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we will get to them. Uh, okay, we have how many California State Agricultural Medals pre-1900 have you been able to document, including different materials and sizes? Well, um, the official ones, uh, basically um, four, um, three silvers, uh, one and three quarters being the most common one and a half being the rarest, and then um, and then about a half a dozen gold, um, all of one and a half inches. Um, the um, the transactions talk about many hundreds of metals over the forty years, but as I mentioned, the survival rate seems to be very low. Um, they typically um, um, run at auction quite quite get quite healthy uh, values, um, um, several hundred dollars for the, um, for, the, for the silver medals and a thousand or more for the gold medals. The, the, um, the, um, the other kinds of awards, the, the cups and the mugs um, that I showed, um, those are generally four figures um, and, and uh, you know, three, four thousand um, dollars. Um, I suspect that there's a, you know, besides the numismatic interest, there's, there's uh, um, interest from people who collect uh, old silver, particularly old uh, Western silver. Hmm. Oh, okay. which, uh, uh, I'm looking at the question. This was the last one, the... the yes, and yeah. which of the medals is your favorite and why? Oh, I like the gold medal the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, mostly because it's gold, but... Um, um, I think uh, I like the deconstruction of the state, uh, the state seal. I think that's uh, the 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 Nall, the Nall brothers were in, were an interesting set of artists and um, and you know, very classically trained. And so um, taking those those elements from the, the the state seal and adapting them for for the purpose of the agricultural metal, I think is uh, is quite fascinating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are any of these medals available to purchase with any frequency? Uh, yeah, in fact, they are. Um, um, the uh, you can find some of the California State Seal medals on eBay right now, um, and the reason you can find them there is the prices are too high. Um, but if you wait, um, uh, you you can find them. I bought two in the last month for fifty dollars, and so um, uh, of the Shreve and Company. Um, those uh, those are popular because they're an attractive metal to hold in your hand, um, mm -hmm. especially if if uh, if you if you get one in 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 very nice condition. Mm -hmm. The um, the Nall Brothers medals come up much more rarely. Um, Fred Hollibird had a collection of them. They came up. Um, he had about six of them that uh, that came up at once. Um, they were they were pretty uh, hotly cont contested. The silver one that I showed was from there. Um, gold medals come up much more, much less frequently. Um, the later medals, um, the big ones, they come up on eBay reasonably frequently, and they often come up a lot at once. Where um, 
you know, someone, someone who won it several times, their estate comes up. And, and so like the ice cream one, you know, all six of them came up at once, which was from a research point of view, really good. <laughs> um, I think from a marketing point of view, it's not, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, eBay is, is the, is the venue for this that I can, that I can see for, for the later metals for certain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, have you noticed any similarities between the California state agricultural metals and state agricultural metals from other states? How about any similarities with agricultural metals from any co other countries in the world? And can you give examples? Uh, I can't give examples. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, that's a, that's a difficult, a difficult question. Um, if I was a real specialist in agricultural metals, I might be able to answer this better. Um, I would say that it's, it's, um, it 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 bears similarity to other agric state agricultural and other country agricultural metals in that um uh some of the um some of some of the uh, um uh the cornucopia for instance is on a lot of them but you know the uh the scene of the mountains and and uh and you know the um the mining bit i think that part's pretty uniquely california you know, it's kind of interesting. You, you you do the mining part of the agricultural fair actually was an important um, important uh, um, uh, uh, part of the of the fair, um, even though you know it's not agriculture, but it it was. Um, uh, and, and in fact, in some other states, um, the the fairs are often called agricultural and mechanical fairs, and so um, um, for one reason or another, they didn't use that label in California. Uh, what went on at Warren's early fairs? Well, they, they, um, they had um, various exhibits, um, um, a lot of flowers. Uh, Warren's were of flowers, um, but also uh, um, uh, um, displays of um, machinery and um, and uh, um, and I suppose uh, um, um, uh, uh, you know, th grapes and, and and other and other agricultural produce. Um, you know, it, it's sort of it, you know, in, in to, to, to us today, this might not be particularly interesting um, to go around and look at a bunch of bunch of displays of of uh, of wheat or grapes or whatnot but um but this was a different time and um this was a, this was a thing to do um especially i think the one in san francisco um which was a much bigger town and um and uh, a pretty rough town actually in 1853 and and um to some extent um these kinds of events were um sort of sort of an attempt to show you know yeah we're 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 civilized too <laughs> you know this is this was this was a cultural a cultural happening if nothing else mm -hmm. okay it looks like that's all that's currently in the q and a oh nope there's another one um how does the how does um how does whether or not the metal has been awarded like with the engraving affect the numismatic value or price for example an awarded versus unawarded metal the same metal otherwise could you please, um, could you give yeah, some that, examples? That's a really good question. And, um, and I should have put a picture of, of one of those metals in, in, um, in, in the, in the talk. Um, if the metal's engraved, it's far more interesting because that gives you another, another thing to, uh, to research. Mm -hmm. And I showed that Mr. Rob had big onions and, or big squash and, good onions. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, the most interesting metal I have, and it's not as in good, as good condition, which is why I didn't show it, is um, awarded to Andrew Halliday. Now, Andrew Halliday, uh, it's a silver one of the Nall Brothers variety. Um, Andrew Halliday in um, uh, 1870 obtained patents for wire rope to build the cable cars in San Francisco, and I have his medal, and that's you know, 
intensely interesting for someone like me who's also interested in in San Francisco uh, history and San Francisco cable cars particularly. Um, and so uh, um, if if the um, awardee is someone who is famous, like Halliday, um, it should be worth a lot more money. Now, I actually happened to got it, get it in an eBay auction where nobody else recognized that, <laughs> and so I got lucky. Um, but if it were if 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 it were resold and marketed as Andrew Halliday's medal, it would be worth you know many more times what I paid for it. Um, and so um, I think that having an awarded medal is 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 always better. Um, and if it's of someone who um, uh, something can be found out about even more so. Mm -hmm. Okay, then that's everything in the Q&A for right now, again. Um, so if anyone else has any other questions, go ahead and send them in pretty quickly. Um, in the meantime, do you have any other closing remarks that you would like to add? Well, I'd just like to thank people who are, uh, who are tuned in now and those who may watch this later. Um, and hope that, uh, that you find this interesting and uh, as the study of metals in general and the study of these kinds of early metals especially. Mm -hmm. Okay, I believe that wraps us up. Um, thank you, Michael, for taking time out of your day to join us and present. It was a lovely talk and thank you for everyone who tuned in to watch um, and who has tuned in throughout the symposium. We have uh, three more talks left today, two of them are overlapping. Uh, the next one is Bill Eckberg starting at four, so you can tune into that one. Um, otherwise, oh, something just came in the Q&A. Is that a question? It's not a question. Okay. Um, so that will finish us up here and hope to see you all at one of the remaining talks. Thank you very much. Thank you.